Hi guys, welcome back. In the previous video, we took a look at how to use role-based access control to limit the access of a specific user to manage resources inside of Microsoft Azure. With Microsoft Azure Storage, you have a resource that you provision called a storage account inside of a resource group. Now, once you've provisioned the storage account, you actually have a different set of credentials or keys as they call them to manage the actual content or the data that's being stored inside of that Azure storage account. So that's kind of the line where you cross between the what's called the management plane, where you're actually managing resources like creating or deleting Azure storage accounts, and the data plane where you're actually managing the data that's inside of that Azure storage account. So what we're going to do is explore how you can create what are called shared access signatures in Azure storage accounts. Now the nice thing about shared access signatures is that very similar to role-based access control, they, the purpose of the SAS is, is to limit the access to resources inside of an Azure storage account. So if you, for example, say have 10 different Azure blob containers inside of a storage account, you can create a shared access signature that prevents access to only certain Azure blob storage containers, or you can limit access based on the source IP range of where a user is attempting to access that storage account from, and you can also control read and write access to them as well. Another great benefit of using a shared access signature for access control in Azure Storage is that you can assign an expiration time to a shared access signature. This prevents somebody from having prolonged access to a storage account when they only need access to a storage account for a temporary period of time, such as a couple of days. So let's jump into the Microsoft Azure portal and take a look at how to use the UI in Azure to create a shared access signature. So I've got the Microsoft Azure portal in front of me, and the first thing we're going to do to demonstrate Azure storage SASs is to create a storage account. To do that, I'll go ahead and create a resource group here called Storage and provision it in the West US2 region. Once you've created the resource group, go ahead and add a storage account into the resource group. To do that, I'll come under the search bar here and search for storage accounts, and then we'll click on the Add button to provision a new storage account. Under the resource group, I'll go ahead and choose my storage resource group name. And then for the storage account name, I'll just call this Trevor Sullivan 5. Make sure that the storage account name that you select is globally unique, because if it is not globally unique, so if I try just Trevor, for example, you'll see that the storage account name has already been taken by another user of Microsoft Azure. So go ahead and do the review and create option, and then click on the create button to provision the storage account into your storage resource group. Once your storage account has been created, go ahead and click on Go to Resource or just navigate to it by using the search bar up here at the top. Now, one of the things you're going to want to do is to create a blob storage container. So head get down to the blob service here and click on Containers. Go ahead and add a new container, and let's pretend that we're going to store some video content inside of this blob container, so I'll just name it Videos. And then you also notice I'm going to leave the public access level at private, so no one who is unauthorized will be able to access the content inside of this blob container. That contrasts with public blob containers where sometimes you may want to publish a file for download and you may want to make it anonymously accessible. However, in this case, what we're going to do is actually delegate access to a blob container using a shared access signature instead. Go ahead and scroll up to Settings and then choose the Shared Access Signature option in the Azure portal. Now you'll have a bunch of different options here that allow you to limit which services are accessible. So inside of Azure Storage, there's Blob, st blob Storage, there's File-Based Storage, there's Queue Storage, and Table Storage as well. Now in our, in our case, we're not going to be using File, Queue, or Table Storage. We're exclusively using the Blob Storage service. So I'll go ahead and just uncheck all of the ones that we're not using. Additionally, you can allow access to the entire storage account service, the container level, or just a specific object that's inside of a blob container. So I'll go ahead and choose both container and object level. You also have the ability to specify which specific sets of permissions you want to allow the shared access signature to have. 
So in this case, I'm just going to limit it to reading files from the blob container. As we, as we mentioned before, the major benefit to using a shared access signature is that the key or the password, the shared access signature itself, has an expiration time. So we can actually change the expiration time to be several days, several weeks, or more. You can also optionally limit the allowed IP addresses to limit the source IP addresses of a request that's coming into the blob storage data plane. You can also choose to limit either HTTPS access or HTTPS and unencrypted HTTP. However, I would almost always recommend avoiding the second option here for security reasons as unencrypted HTTP connections could potentially leak your shared access signature and give an unauthorized user access to the data that's inside of your storage account. And then finally, at the end here, you'll notice that we have a signing key. So every storage account has two different keys associated with it, a what used to be called a primary and a secondary key, and was now rebranded as just key one and key two. So you can choose either one of those keys to act as the signing key for this shared access signature. So once that's been done, go ahead and click on Generate SAS and Connection String. And if you scroll down here, you'll see that the SAS token here, which is just this part of the URL, is going to be our password that gives access to our storage account. As you can see, there's quite a few different options to generate a shared access signature that provides limited access to storage resources inside of an Azure storage account. In this video, we took a look at how to use the Microsoft Azure portal to create a SaaS. However, in the next video, we're gonna take a look at how to use PowerShell to do the same thing. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing. Thanks for watching. If you are interested in a career in IT, or maybe you'd just like to brush up on your IT skills, check out cbtnuggets.com and sign up for a free account.